my people? Welcome back to the question where you have the questions and I have the answers. And look, I'm back in my dorm room and I also have my uh, selfie stick now so I don't have to hold and constantly switch angles while I'm talking. You know what else that means? Now that I'm back in college, I can tell you everything I've learned here and go on rants about stupid stuff people have said. Um, <laughs> so without further ado, let's get on to the video. So this quarter, I'm taking two interesting classes. Um, if you recall when I was in college, last quarter, I talked mostly about uh, my religious studies class and my FSM. Well, this quarter, I have my writing class, which is specifically about fandoms, um, and my sociology class, which is interesting enough as it is because it is sociology. Today, we're going to be talking about something we were discussing slash reading about in my writing class. As I said, it's fandoms. So we were talking about the existence of bronies and what that says about existing gender norms and masculinity. So let's get started. Those of you who don't know, but if you're watching my channel, you most likely do. Bronies are um, fans of My Little Pony who are, instead of being like little girls, they are teenagers to 20 year old men. Um, but actually after reading the article it says that the age of bronies, well on average are in their mid to late 20s, it can extend all the way up to like mid 50s. We specifically read about military bronies, and uh, these are people who are either active in the military or military veterans or are on military reserve. Um, who enjoy My Little Pony. And the article specifically was about how they face the contradiction of gender norms between the show they watch and where they are in the masculine hierarchy. When we talk about masculine hierarchy, we mean like levels of manliness, because obviously we have a peak level of masculinity and then we have, you know, the more misogynistic, oh, if you do this, you're more like a girl, if you do this, you are gay as an insult and so on and so forth. And Historically, that has been defined by the military, specifically World War II um, propaganda, which has stated that, hey, this kind of person is like the ideal man, the ideal pinnacle of masculinity if they are going to sign up for the military. So the military encapsulates like the peak of masculine hierarchy, um, whereas My Little Pony is once again a TV show intended for little girls and so there's a gender contradiction there and so the article is looking about how they reconcile this, if they do reconcile this, and what some of the feedback has been uh, about m the existence of military bronies because while well, there's a military, uh, or there's a My Little Pony fan base, a small percent of it is bronies and an even smaller percent of that is military bronies. I think in total military bronies take up maybe four to five percent of the total my Little Pony fan base. The article that we were reading uh, referenced the, you can go look this up on YouTube, I'll probably link it in the bio um, or the description. Wow, I'm on too many different social media forums. I'll link it in the description. It's uh, Military Bronies React to Teens Reacting to Bronies. Um, and if you watch that, um, the teens have a very disturbed sense for the bronies. And I think a lot of people do. I remember when I first learned about bronies were, I was probably in middle school or elementary school. I wasn't very comfortable with the notion of like adult men liking a show for little kids. Um, but the teens didn't like it because it wasn't a masculine or traditional masculine thing. They thought they were like gay or they used the word fags or just they, were too, they weren't man enough. Um, but me and my friends, the issue we had with bronies was that these are grown men liking something for little girls. That's kind of like, it gives off pedophilic vibes. Um, and that's not to say that all bronies are pedophiles, and most of them probably aren't. Um, and the article actually went in depth about how they feel like they can be more uh, human, or this talks to them more about like emotions and friendship, which regular masculine uh, norms don't let them do. And that's really, really empowering. But like, from my perspective, and I think from a lot of people's perspective, the initial like disgust they have with bronies is because it gives off a very like pedophilic vibe. Because the difference between men liking girly stuff or feminine stuff, like men wearing makeup or men wearing dresses, but then this is something targeted towards actual little kids. 
that gets creepy because it's not just, oh, these little boys like My Little Pony, it's these grown men who like My Little Pony. And once again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the vibe it gives off is creepy. But um, you're into what you're into and there's a difference between people who like My Little Pony and people who are actual pedophiles. Anyway, so the teens had a bad reaction to the existence of brownies, mostly because of misogynistic gender norms. Um, and the way that the military bronies reacted to this was um, to either insult the teens back, like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, or, you know, if you hold this opinion, then you don't know what you're talking about. Or, uh, and they used this term throughout the article, masculine innocence. And that is basically they either didn't know or they fiend not knowing um, about the enforcement of gender roles or gender norms. So a lot of the times it was like, like this one woman, she was like, well, I wouldn't want someone, I wouldn't want to date someone who liked My Little Pony. I want someone who's like actually like a man. And they'd be like, we've done more like manly things than you or we've done this or if you're asking for that then you're gonna get like raped or sexually assaulted or something like that you know instead of accepting that this is something that guys can do it was that like reinforcement kind of of gender roles being like yeah well we're more manly because we're in the military but we also do this like they don't see it as a contradiction they see it as like these things can coexist not coexist in a way but like it's not this it's not the powerful subversion that I think my class or the article originally framed it to be, you know, because the way the article started out, it was like, oh, guys are liking girl things. This is a huge step in um, destroying gender norms. But that's not what was happening. What was happening was that created a, set, a coexistence, kind of. It's like, oh, you know, men can be manly masculine men but also they can have these feminine traits of you know friendship and loyalty and liking colorful colors and ponies and that kind of stuff. Um, but so it was like small steps towards expanding the definition of masculinity and small steps, but it wasn't like an, a, a giant statement on gender equality or gender norms, subversion or reversal. And that's something else people brought up is that that was brought up in the article was that My Little Pony on the surface level looks like it is, you know, this little kid show, but everything about it mirrors a patriarchal stand, <laughs> a patriarchal society um, in a way that is probably attractive to a lot of men because it, while it is a colorful show with all like female cast and bright colors and you know, singing and ponies and talks of friendship, the actual setup for the show and the actual like layout is something very similar to what is seen in a patriarchal society or in military situations. Probably thinking, how do we get patriarchy in military situations from My Little Pony? And the way that they broke it down was that uh, the only difference between My Little Pony society and our society is just gender reversal you know instead of being you know mostly men and all the men are in charge you're creating the rules everyone is female uh but there's still one ruler who makes all the decisions without consulting the people she's making decisions for and usually not explaining what the decisions are for until after stuff's already happened um and the main character, Twilight Sparkle, initially in the first episode is sent away without uh, wanting to some place she doesn't know in order to gather information and undergo quests uh, in order to um, learn about herself and about the people she's surrounded by, which is very similar to the military being unwillingly shipped out to some place you don't know by someone who's making decisions for you uh, in order to report back information or to go on missions uh, that you didn't initially want to do. So it has, so even though it's a very, you know, little kid show, it has relatable un, un, like themes and undertones, which is probably why it draws in such a masculine dynamic because it's just enough of a subversion of gender roles to be 
uh, noticeable or challenging, but it also doesn't present any large changes to society that we already know. This is how we get to that point where even though they don't directly acknowledge that these gender roles contradict that of the show and that of uh, their position of in the masculine hierarchy and in society in general, they find that it's a place that they can coexist because these ideas are coexisting. It's basically colorful military living situation um, when you get down to it. And some of you are probably gonna be like, you're overthinking My Little Pony, but I didn't overthink it. I'm taking this from the article. Whoever wrote that article overthought it. I'm just presenting this information to you because it does present an interesting take on why one, so many grown men are attracted to My Little Pony. Attracted wasn't the right word, but like drawn in and fascinated by My Little Pony, why they relate to it so much. Um, and two, why even though this fan base exists, it doesn't create a bigger uh, gender role subversion or gender role uh, destruction within fandom as a whole that it does. Um, because it's also noticeable to point out that the language that these military bronies and these bronies are using is still misogynistic and sexist and homophobic. You know, every time they said, oh, well, I was scared to admit that I like this because I thought people would think I was a fag, you know, because if you like this stuff, you are still like a fag and using those terms. And, you know, so they still view feminine stuff and women's stuff as weaker or less than, but they just think that they're the exception to that because they also have this masculine quality to them. And that's something important to point out as well is that even though there is that tiny bit of expansion, it's not as great a deal as we think it is. I mean, it's still important. Any progress is important progress, but it's not a revolutionary change because there's still this misogyny within the community. They just think that they're above it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. So long, thanks for all the fish. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes.